An unforgettable Saturday at Autzen. With the door to the BCS open to Oregon, the Trojans come in and slam it shut. Self-inflicted wounds were the theme of the night as the Ducks dug themselves an early hole and couldn't climb all the way back. In Corvallis, the Beavers put away all the bad feelings on senior day as OSU turned the tables on the Huskies and gets ready for the Civil War in style. On a crazy Saturday around the conference, the Utes stayed in the hunt for the South Division crown in snow-covered Pullman. The Bruins are still in the driver's seat in the South, though, after beating the Buffs, and Stanford nearly suffered a big game bummer at home against Cal. The final week of the season is upon us, and nothing has been nailed down just yet. One thing's for sure, this edition of Inside the Pack starts right now. to throw, wants to go deep, way downfield, he's got Lee, and he has got it, and it'll be a touchdown, Marquise Lee. Was it the Trojans Super Bowl? Sure looked like it on Saturday night as Matt Barkley and company spoil Oregon's BCS dreams. Hello and welcome to Inside the Pack. Tom Ward here with you for the next 30 minutes. Joined each week by Nick Krupke and our in-studio analyst this week, former Oregon defensive lineman Todd Kanapu. TK, thanks for being here. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be on ITP. Well, sometimes it's not your night. It sure was Matt Barkley's on Saturday night. Oh, uh, wow. What a performance. Uh, pinpoint accuracy, uh, managed the game extremely well, hit some great receivers, but wow, um, looked far better than Luck did the week before. Well, how about the clock management? Chip Kelly refusing to call timeouts until it got really, really late. They were down at the USC 34 with around 45, 46 seconds to go. And just your thoughts on the way those timeouts were called. Darren Thomas said afterwards, it's Chip's job to call the timeouts. From a coaching standpoint, if you were to call the timeouts, you'd probably get yourself two or three more plays, be able to take a shot downfield into the end zone. But obviously, they look like they're going for the field goal. Did you feel, yeah, that's my next question. Did you feel like they were playing to win or just to get to overtime? As they were pressing it with their fast paced uh, uh, offensive style that they use, I thought they would try to press it into the end zone a little sooner. All right, Nick, in Corvallis, the Beavers uh, finally do what we've uh, seen them yeah. do a couple of times this year. They look really good on senior day, and now all of a sudden makes the Civil War a little more interesting. Yeah, first time in a month they can walk away and feel good about a game. And we always talk about the last couple of weeks, when are they all these freshmen and redshirt freshmen going to maybe show some maturity a little bit and make some big plays. We're well, going to see coming up in the highlights, the freshmen just dot the day as they had a lot of great days. Sean Mannion looks to be so much better at some points in time, like he did on Saturday. And again, the Civil War, nothing is a given. We've seen that in college football this past week, so the Beavers feel a whole lot better than they did three weeks ago. Well, like I said, certainly adding a layer yeah. of drama now to the Civil War in what maybe a couple of weeks ago was looking like a one-sided contest. Well, did you hear that cheer that came from the Casanova Center on Friday night? when number two Oklahoma State lost to Iowa State. That apparently was the Ducks getting excited about their prospects to make the BCS national title game. Ah, but there was still unfinished business for Oregon. A USC team with no postseason looked to spoil things at Austin Saturday night, and the Ducks looking to extend their conference leading 19th straight Pac-12 win and nation best 21 game home win streaks. NBA megastars have nothing better to do, so LeBron, D. Wade, Chris Paul and company made the trip south from Nike to hang out on the sidelines prior to the game. After the two teams exchanged fumbles, the Trojans connected big. Matt Barkley off play action to Marquise Lee. Both had monster days. Lee sheds Troy Hill and walks in 59 yards. Ducks held scoreless in the first quarter, 7-0. First play of the second, Barkley to his other big weapon. Robert Woods going one-on-one, -on -one and Woods wins that battle. 12 yards, make it 14 zip Trojans. What's going on? The Ducks offense eventually got it going on a frigid night. DT to DAT. Darren Thomas to DeAnthony Thomas. 29 yard strike against the school. DAT nearly went to Oregon down 14 7. Just before the half. Ducks driving again down 21 7. Inside the red zone, LaMichael. James coughs up the football. Said later that brace that protects his elbow broke. Trojans recover to keep the score at 21-7. Third quarter, it's now 24-7. Kenyon Barner gets Oregon closer. Nine-yard touchdown, 24-14. And then late in the third, down 38-14, the Quack Mamba strikes. Catching it at the four, fakes the reverse. Kicker tripped him up earlier on a return, but not this time. Gets a couple of blocks, and he's gone. DAT's 
second TD return this year. Two-point conversion, no good. Ducks down 38-20 after three to the fourth. The comeback continues. Varner again into the open field. Eight-yard score, 38-27, 123 yards rushing for Kenyon. Barkley and the Trojans try to hold him off, but the Ducks defense finally gets to him. Barkley victimized by John Boyette and Oregon, now with all the momentum. Ensuing drive, maybe one of the more underutilized weapons this year for Oregon. David Paulson, unreal wow, catch as he stabs and grabs. 18-yard gain down to the one. Next play, LaMike punches in. It's a one-possession game at 38-33. So here we go with another two-point try. Lavagier, two and a, can tiptoe and does stay in bounds. Great catch and balance after re review. The two-point conversion stood. It's a three-point game, 38-35. Trojans got first down after first down until Mark Tyler puts it on the carpet. Brandon Hanna recovers. Two and a half minutes to play. Ducks have the ball. Oregon eventually set up Alejandro Maldonado. 37-yard attempt to force OT, but the sophomore pulls it left, and that outside. is it. Oh, so close. Ducks fall short. SC's first win in the state of Oregon since Reggie Bush and company back in 05. 38-35, that snaps Oregon's conference best 19-game win streak, the nation leading 21 in a row at home. Now it'll take a win in the Civil War to win the North and host that title game. Barner, 15 carries, 123 yards. The Ducks, though, held 90 yards under their rushing average. Darren Thomas, he was all right, not always the sharpest. His first loss as a starter in conference play. Contrast that Barkley, he was amazing. 323 yards passing, four touchdowns. TK, as we talked about at the top of the show, the Trojans came in with a game plan on offense that brought back memories of 2008. Kellen Moore and the Boise State Broncos came in with a play action mindset, really tricked Oregon in that game. Seemed like a similar situation on Saturday night. I think with uh, how the offensive line played for USC, they really controlled the line of scrimmage. They kept uh, our defense kind of at bay. Couldn't really find a, a key on where to blitz and how to blitz them. And Matt Barkley did an amazing job with his play action and his setup for his throws. Yeah, we see him get it going here early with two great wideouts and lots of time to throw. They always had outside pressure coming hard. They were trying to run some cross twist, twist blitzes and uh, we just never seemed to get to it. Yeah, that's Marquise Lee. And then later, more great protection for Matt Barkley. This is a gain of 24 to Woods. We call this slide protection on the offensive line. They just washed everything away, which gave him uh, Barkley time. And when you give that guy time to throw, this is what happens. Yeah, and you see it there. And it continued all night. And Barkley, give him some credit, but also give these receivers some credit. They made some all-star catches here. The He's two, got plenty of time here, too. Two of the outside receivers, yeah. The, I think the play action set that up and the running game set that up. But th this play by Marquise Lee, one of the, one of the best plays in the night. Well, Barkley, 26 of 34, 323, four touchdowns, 9.5 yards per attempt. Wow. And at one point in the game, he was 22 of 25. That's how hot this guy was in the passing game. The talk for Matt Barkley is now, uh, his, is he the front runner in the right. NFL draft? Well, Chip Kelly said leading up to this game that it's basically arguing about which supermodel is hotter. <laughs> Okay. Would you agree? Yeah. Uh, well, I wouldn't. I'm not going to judge on their hotness, but yes, they're both very good quarterbacks. <laughs> All right. Well, the loss by Oregon provides the Beavers with a little extra motivation heading into the 115th Civil War. If OSU can pull off the upset, it will keep the Ducks out of the Pac-12 title game, which would provide some measure of revenge as Oregon kept the Beavers out of the Rose Bowl back in 2008 and 2009. But first, Oregon State hosted Washington in senior day for 17 Beavers, including James Rogers, Joe Halahuni, Daryl Ketchings, Kevin Fromm, Lance Mitchell, and Brandon Harden, who was injured this year. Down 7-0, something we haven't seen often, just Oregon State's second first quarter touchdown of the season. Mannion to James Rogers, who just does get it in, ties Mike Haas for the all-time career lead with 220 career receptions. After a Jordan Poyer interception of Nick Montana, Rodgers takes over as the sole leader in receptions. Finished the day with 222. He gave the ball to his trainer, the man who helped Rodgers return from that knee injury. Next play, Rodgers is the decoy, and it's a reverse to Marcus Wheaton. Great block by Mannion. Wheaton brought down by Desmond Trufant after he makes it all the way down to the six-yard line. 56-yard pickup. Beavers ran for 145 yards. Who are these guys? On third and goal, Manning with another six yard TD. Micah Hatfield, the first career reception and score for the wideout from Lake Oswego. Rogers' big day came to an end before halftime. It was supposed to be a throwback to Mannion. Instead, number one goes down with an ankle sprain. 
More on that later, 17-14 at the half. The Beavers dodged two big bullets in the third, a pair of turnovers, but no points for UW, so it's still 17-14 in the fourth, and watch this, Oboom Guacham, such a big target, the redshirt freshman from Chino Hills, 50-yard gain all the way down to the three-yard line. Next play, Jovan Stevenson with the payoff. The three-yard touch, 24-14, Beavers. Scott Crichton having a season to remember. The redshirt freshman from Tacoma against the team he said he grew up admiring. Should offer Crichton a scholarship. The Titan. That's right. right. Give the kid a scholarship. Forces the school record fifth fumble of the year, and that set up another Stevenson TD from the 15-yard line. Stevenson with his fourth of the season. O-State now in full control up 31-14. Steve Sarkeesian decides to put in Keith Price. Maybe he waited too long. Price came in injured with a bad knee, but he got the Huskies going. 20-yard TD to Devin Aguilar makes it 31-21. But after Brandon Cooks coughed it up on the kickoff, Price in position to make it a three-point game. Freshman Ryan Murphy takes it right back at the goal line, and the Beavers take over at the one-yard line. No problem, though. Out of the end zone, just throw the rock. A bomb from Mannion to Wheaton. 52-yard gain when all is said and done. And then on fourth and goal, Oregon State puts it away. Stevenson with the trifecta on the touchdown off left tackle, and Oregon State ends that three-game slide. 38-21 Beavs picking up the third win of the season, and their seventh in the last eight against Washington. Wheaton, Oregon State's leading receiver and rusher, 125 yards on seven snags, 66 yards with 56 of that coming on the big reverse. Yeah, Rodgers, four catches, giving him 222 passes. Mike Cass all-time, as you mentioned. His 19 receiving touchdowns, third all-time, just behind one back of the career leaders in Haas and James Newsom. Crichton, two sacks. So make it six on the season. Again, that program record now five force fumbles. TK says Washington should have given him a scholarship. When it goes right for the Beavers, they sure do look good. It's easy to see where that talent is there, and it's going somewhere. After two red zone turnovers against Cal a week ago, the Beavers came back and scored on six of seven trips to the red zone. Yeah, who are these guys? I don't know. Five of them were touchdowns. Oregon State also got it done on third down. Who are these guys? Eight of 14 conversion on third down. The other big difference came on against the run. That run defense relatively holding Chris Polk in check. Only 109 yards. That's good for Oregon State. Coach Riley liked his team's job containing the Huskies from breaking those plays, the big ones on the outside. And despite a poor record this season, the Beavers sent their seniors off with a win. And with 10 true freshmen playing this year, you can maybe begin to see some of the light at the end of this two-year dip in that tunnel. Should note, too, wideout Jordan Bishop fractured his foot in pregame warmups. He will not play in the Civil War. Malcolm Agnew did not play against Washington. Coach Riley says he was healthy. Just didn't get in the game. We didn't want to elaborate on what's going on there. Will he play? James Riders had the ankle tweak, says he will be playing in that Civil War. Nothing said and nothing's done, but the Beavers certainly feel a whole lot better going into the Civil War than they did a couple weeks ago. Well, yeah, now Oregon State with uh, really some motivation coming yep. into this game. They feel good. They have a shot to spoil Oregon's chances after the Ducks have done it to them now a couple times in the recent history. Well, the Ducks are down to ninth in this week's AP Top 25 after losing to the Trojans. Stanford, by the way, back up to fourth. Let that swirl around. Still to come on Inside the Pack, we'll go back to Austin where some of the Ducks felt the team that says it never looks ahead was doing exactly that Saturday night. With ourselves, everybody talking about the championship and stuff, what's going to happen next, but we had to come out and play the game, and we ain't really play the game. We let the game get ahead of us. Plus, the big game was nearly a big flop for the Cardinal, trying to avoid a second straight loss. As always, lots more Beavers, Ducks, and the rest of the Pac-12 Online all the time at our website, InsideThePack.com. We're back after this.